guys, it's Taylor and welcome back to the car podcast. I'm going to be going over my personal experience with AT&T. So, if you didn't know, I had to move away from Grand Rapids, Michigan last minute. I was completing an internship here. I kind of decided it was probably like the best decision for me if I wanted to stay in the film industry and I actually wanted to pursue this goal of mine that it probably was best to go somewhere where it is the hot spot for like media and entertainment. So I flew back to Grand Rapids. I packed my shit up and we drove a U-Haul away. We left the AT&T modem and router and inside of my Grand Rapids apartment. And it kind of was probably a bad decision of me to think that automatically this is what we should have done. But the reason why I had this thought process was that the only service provider that the apartment complex provides is AT&T. So I was like, okay, well if they install AT&T you know, twice a week here, I think it should be beneficial that they could just pick up the modem and router from my apartment complex on their way out. Like that was just my thought process. But apparently that's not really the case. So I called up AT&T, I let them know I needed to disconnect my service, I was moving to California, I needed to set up service somewhere else. They said, okay, that's fine, that's dandy, that's perfect, whatever. I moved my shit 34 hours back to California, put all my shit, got it set up, and then I got an email from AT&T saying that I needed to leave my modem and router with a UPS or a FedEx store, that like shipping was free, just to drop it off with them, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, I can't do that now. I'm here in California, my car is in California. It makes no sense for me to buy a plane ticket, $150 at least plane ticket, to fly back to Grand Rapids, bring it to a UPS or FedEx store just to satisfy your needs. So I called someone up on customer support. Apparently there's a separate line just for like issues. If you have your internet box and it's not working appropriately, you're supposed to call a number and they're supposed to be able to help you over the phone. So that's the number I called and they didn't really understand me so they transferred me somewhere else. I was placed on a 30 minute hold with this other person and I guess the person that was waiting for 30 minutes wasn't even the right person either. So I talked to them they sounded like a foreigner, so they couldn't really understand me. They were like, oh, you set up internet. And I'm like, no, I'm not setting up internet. I am disconnecting internet. I was just wondering if there's a way a maintenance guy could pick up the boxes from my apartment complex and take it back with them since they make stops frequently at my apartment complex anyways. I talked to the apartment complex and they told me they were gonna let me leave the router and modem behind the front desk, but they were gonna put it in a side room just where it wouldn't get stolen by like someone random, you know? I was like, oh yeah, that sounds perfect. So that was the part I was trying to let AT&T know about. Well, this lady's like, no, no, no. And she started asking for like my address, my name, my phone number, my account number. And she was like about to set up internet again for this apartment that I already just moved out of. So she didn't really understand me. And I said, no, 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 I'm sorry. Um, I have the wrong number and I like hung up. And then I called back finally, and I got a hold of the right customer support. And the right customer support was a guy named Luca, and he just was not happy. I was explaining my situation and how I was under the impression like a maintenance guy could come and grab it and bring it back. And he said, no, 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 that's illegal. Like, that's illegal. Why would you think that's legal? That is illegal. We can't do that. I'm like, okay, but it's your equipment. It's your company. You're coming to my apartment complex anyways this week. Why is it such a big deal for you to pick it up? They're like, it, we, we don't own, we, you leased it to us. We cannot grab from your apartment. I said, it's not in the apartment, it's at the front desk. And he says, no, no, it doesn't work like that. You take to UPS or FedEx store. And I was like, I'm sorry, sir, but I am in California. And he just wasn't understanding. And he's like, I can help you set up service at the new place, but I cannot pick up equipment. That's not something we do. That is not legal. It is illegal. We will charge you money if you do not bring back. And I was like, 
like, okay, well, thanks anyways, and I hung up on him. So now I know that you cannot leave your modem and router inside of your apartment complex, even if you have like a, a drama experience where you have to leave. Like they're still not gonna pick up your shit, moral of story. It's a little bit aggravating because they can't really see it from my side. I don't really understand why it's such a big deal, but like, I was talking to my friend about it and he was kind of trying to explain it to me like leasing cars. Kind of the same idea when you lease a car from someone, you can't just leave it somewhere and expect the people that leased it to you to come pick it up. And I guess I kind of get that analogy, but the fact is this is like an internet box, a cable box. It's not like it's precious $30,000 equipment, you know? So I don't know. I I, it ruined my whole mood. The whole conversation, the, the whole like three hours almost of trying to get a hold of someone just to be told this information, <laughs> I guess was a little upsetting at the least. But it all ended up working out well. Thank you, Chloe. Chloe grabbed the equipment, she took it back to UPS. Didn't have to pay any money, she just gave him the account number. It worked out well. I was really worried. It was a headache having to deal with this. But um, we figured it out. It's all good, it's all dandy. That's my experience with AT&T. Moral of the story, they're not gonna help you. It's not in their procedures to help you at all if you <laughs> are moving out and your apartment complex is only an AT&T place. Still, please leave your modem and router out of UPS or FedEx or you're gonna go through the headache that I had to go through. Like, imagine if I didn't have a friend that lived in that apartment complex. How would I have gotten that back? Would I have had like a friend like knock at the door and like ask a leasing agent to let them in and then explain themselves? Like it just wouldn't have worked out in my favor. So I'm very appreciative of the situation that I was in and I was able to get it figured out, but that was my experience with AT&T. I just, I didn't get it. It didn't make sense to me why they were wanting me to buy a plane ticket just to do something in their favor. But I mean, I guess that's the right way to do things, right? So get over it, Taylor. <laughs> I'm gonna move into the second topic. On my 32 to 34 hour to Burbank, California, I went through various states. And these various states come with different type of weather conditions, different type of environmental issues. Um, when I'm saying that, I'm just talking about the soil, the grass, the dirt, the different types of thing that comes with different states. For example, when I drove through Arizona, holy shit, my car got covered in red sand. Like the grill was completely caked in Arizona orangey red sand. It was ridiculous. For example, I drove through New Mexico and there was like a lot of gravel and rocks that would get stuck underneath where like my tires are at. Like Flagstock, Arizona, there's a lot of sap from the pine trees. It like, ruins the hood of my car. I wasn't really sure I was gonna be able to get it off. I've never like experienced that by myself. I've always been thankful and appreciative of my dad being able to help me with stuff like that when I was younger, but now that I'm older and I don't really have him as close to me and able for him to help me, I have to figure things like that out by myself. <laughs> um, moral of the story, I went to a clean it yourself car wash because the different states I went to and all this caked on mud and dirt and rocks and just sap and it looked like a disaster and I drove that car for a while because obviously I didn't have a job when I came down here. I was living off of the funds that I solely had made before I left. I saved up quite a bit where I could go, but I mean, I still wasn't like financially 100% like stable. But I guess I, I put it off so long that because I thought I was kind of unnecessary. It's not like something you actually need in life. Like when you think about people that are like suffering and are not financially stable, they're not going and washing their car, moral of the story. But after a while, I guess, people started pointing out to me. They'd be like, oh, your car's so money, or they would just like make a point and like make comments about it. And after the fact, I was just like, okay, I have a really nice car, I need to take care of it. Like I will go out and spend, you know, 10, 15, 20 dollars to wash the car. And I didn't think it was gonna be beneficial for me to actually wash it through a car wash that washes itself. I thought it would probably be more beneficial to actually hand wash the car with like soap, water, and the full brush, whatever. So I did that for the first time ever. I've never been to one of those. I have washed my car by hand, but I just, ah! I just nearly ran over like a giant metal plate in the middle of the road. So that was kind of traumatizing. But I was in there and I did one round. So I had soaked the car, completely washed the car, and I just felt like I needed to use a rag. I used the leftover soap that was dripping out of the foaming brush onto the rag and I said, 
to just scrub at the areas of my car that I just couldn't get off. People behind me were going ballistic. I don't know if they were just having a bad day. Like there was four or five other lanes. It wasn't like I was at the only self-serve car wash. And this guy gets out of his car and starts screaming at me. But you have no time. I need to wash my car. What the f do you think you're doing? And I'm just like, okay, hold up. Wait a minute. What did I do to you? I didn't say anything to him. I was just like, you know, kind of just like washing my car. Um, I think he just wanted someone to yell at or he was having a bad day and he needed to take his frustration and anger out on someone else. And I guess I so happenly was that person. So thank you, God, for that. I'm kidding. <laughs> but really, I don't think I actually deserved it in any way, shape, or form. But how I handled the situation um, was I just kind of like kept minding my business. And then I didn't feel so bad because he actually started to pull up behind another car in another lane. Um, and he started to just repeatedly like honk his horn at the car. Just like crazy, mad crazy. My first experience at the car wash was just a little, a little interesting. Like I understand where the guy was coming from if he was angry at the fact that I wasn't paying for more time and I was sitting under the thing. But it's like I'm still washing my car. That's what it's for. Like I would understand if I was like sitting in my car, I was jamming out to music, or I was on the phone, or whatnot, but I literally was washing my car, so I don't quite understand why he was super mad about it. Like, I couldn't have pulled out, washed it, and then got back in, because then by that point, the soap would have dried, it wouldn't have been nice for the car. It is what it is. That was my experience with the car wash, man. I'm supposed to be turning right right there, but there's no way I'm gonna be able to make that. I hate roads in California, because they're like four to six lanes across and it's hard to go all the way over um especially when the navigator's like turn right it's like okay but i can't get over that quick like calm down <laughs> like chill just hold on wait a minute chill out so on to my third topic i wanted to really talk about personal experiences with like my hospitality jobs that i'm currently going through i don't think i'm in the right headspace to really talk about my experiences especially when it's something i'm like currently and presently going through i don't really know how to open up about that quite yet so living something that was a giant goal of mine since i was a little kid and i'm still trying to process that and i I'm in the processing phase of everything. Like I haven't quite gotten through the processing of actually being here and like how to go about my next steps because I didn't even think I would get this far, I guess is what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> um, but I'm super grateful, I'm super appreciative. I actually didn't think I was gonna be living in California and like the, the cost of living is so high so I'm definitely having to sacrifice things that I once really liked and you know like getting my hair done as frequently it's definitely not a thing I can do I can't buy you know clothing quite a lot because I'm using the extra coin um, to pay for my apartment because the cost of living is so high and I, I don't want to live in like a, a shithole or I don't want to live in somewhere I feel unsafe especially if I'm here by myself and I have to live every single day and go outside and walk my dog and etc I want to feel safe and I want to feel like I'm in a good neighborhood or in a content area and that definitely takes sacrifices. I have to pay a little more to be where I want to be. Um, yeah, but I guess moral of the story, <laughs> I do want to talk about jobs. I do want to talk about the horror stories of working where I work at, sharing my experiences, not putting anyone down like I was saying in the last video. It's never my goal to put a certain individual down or make it seem like what this one individual is doing is so wrong. I just kind of want to go through my experiences and why I feel the way I feel. Hopefully this video was entertaining and something that you liked watching. Let me know if you want to see more of these car podcasts. Give it a big thumbs up to show that you care and you support and you want to see more. Um, I love you all. I appreciate you all and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Toodles.